The following is a presentation of the incredible and Black Hollywood Live Networks. The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most influential entertainment figures, highlighting their tips, tricks, and techniques on breaking into the entertainment industry. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. Hey everyone, you're watching Black Hollywood Live Breaking Into. I'm Dario Kristen, and here joining me is the lovely Jessica King. Hello. And our very special guest today is one of the most sought after talent manager, managers and producers in Hollywood, David Weintraub is with us today. Thank you for having me, my pleasure to be here. Congratulations on your new project, Hollywood Hillbillies. Thank you so much. I Thank think you. that we all feel like we need to be a part of that show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like Seriously. it's like someone's dream to be discovered by a talent manager and to have him want you to become a star. I mean, how do you go about selecting your talent to even just uh, well? I mean, the I mean, for that for that particular show, you know, that was the the luck of the draw was YouTube. You know, do not ever say that people cannot be discovered on YouTube. I mean, this is a breeding ground for talent. And when I saw that particular, when I saw Michael and his family on there, I just knew that they were going to be something special. And I, I had to get my hands in there and bring them out here and try and uh, try and make something happen. And, and I guess what we've done is we've done some uh, comedy genius, I guess. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I also have, you know, uh, uh, migraine headaches like you wouldn't believe having to deal with the family. But it is my pleasure to, uh, to do that with them. And we're, we're having a great time with that show. Well, speaking of discovering people, uh, there are so many people that want to get in this business these yes. days. What are some of your tips on how to find an agent or a manager and legit representation? I mean, I think that if, if you strongly believe that you have talent, that you really, you know, people are telling you that or you have studied and you're going to school and you're in acting class or you're studying music or you're studying dance, whatever it may be, I think it's going to come down to at first you've got to get your package together, okay, mm -hmm. which is your materials. Because you can't just make a phone call and expect somebody to understand, sure. hey, you know what, my, my aunt says I'm a star. Right. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to know what your aunt's opinion is of Mama seeing you. Says seeing right. you like pet your dog a special way like we can't do that no the package needs to include photos video a resume and something that is going to stick out i mean i need to see something that's really going to like wow me even yeah. at the beginning stages of just even hearing a pitch getting an email you know being told about somebody something has to grab you and bring mm -hmm. you in video is by far the best possible way to convey any type of beginning of making a package. I mean, even if you can't make a beautiful, you know, folder with pictures and all kinds of expensive art to do it, make a video on your phone, show your talents. You know, the, t with today's technology, it is not that difficult to really come up with something. There's even programs on your iPhone to, e to edit down whatever you're doing. Like, yeah. it's really not that hard. And I think that if you can come in with that proper package from the get-go, somebody like myself is gonna not have to do all the hard work. I don't wanna hear a big, long, drawn-out pitch of especially somebody who's unknown, and I don't wanna be rude about that, but, uh, but you know, y you, it's hard to hear someone who hasn't done anything and be like, this is why I deserve to have a manager or an agent or this. No, we have to have the talent and the visual or the audio or whatever it may be speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned unknown. How important is it for someone to have credits coming in to find a manager or a or someone to represent I mean, them? you have to have something. There has to be some level of like, I broke ground in this space. I did this great commercial. I did this great viral video. I'm doing stand up three times a week here. I have a song that's bubbling on the underground. You know, I did this incredible independent student film. It, 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 one of those things needs to be at least at the root of the beginning stage because I don't think you're going to get anybody credible to come onto a team of an unknown without at least having something like that to break in in yeah. some way, shape, or form. So I think that that that's the bare bones. Now we go way beyond that, <laughs> but let's at least have that as the minimum. Right. And then kind of early on in the career, you start off as an. At Death Row Records. Yeah. Well, I, 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 when I was when I was 15 years old, I, um, I, I wound up getting an internship at Interscope Records. And Interscope was the parent company to Death Row Records. So here I am, grew up in Beverly Hills. 
you know, I, I come from a family of doctors and lawyers, but all my friends' parents were all these figures of the entertainment business, actors and, you know, studio chiefs and record company owners. So I wanted to go into that business. So I got this, <laughs> I got this internship that wound up turning into a junior A&R ship at Death Row Records. And I mean, this was in the heyday. This was 1995 wow. to 1998. So we're talking Tupac, Snoop, Dr. Dre, The Dog Pound, Nate Dogg, Warren the G. Serious lineup. Wow, yeah. Like it was, it was it. And <laughs> so I would go to school every day and then I would go and spend my afternoons at Interscope and Death Row being like, you know, they had a nickname. They had, the a, <laughs> they had a nickname for me. Because okay? I name? was like, okay, so and granted, like, you know, I was like the little white kid, coming, <laughs> you know, the white Jewish kid. They called me Super Dave, and it wasn't Super, Super Dave. Super. It was, S and so all my like death row clothes and everything. It, always, it never said Dave. It said, and I go by David anyway. So it, it said Supa S U P A Dave, like like as in like Super Dave Osborne. Like remember this guy. <laughs> so that's what I was to everybody, and still to this day, like I'll run into you know corrupt who I've managed for a lot of years. Wow. Even corrupt still said, calls me Super Dave to this day. It's like it's like can I can I be David now? Like it's, you know, I, I think I've grown from being like the junior guy to now being your manager right. let me let me get a little bit of a let me get a little shine here <laughs> well that so. could be your alter ego you know your new rap career you right started right. that you know who, who, super dave hey, who would have known who would have known, <laughs> known? <laughs> can you can you picture me like in my suit just rolling no. <laughs> uh, you gotta so, lean back you gotta lean back right yeah, yeah well i know how to lean back believe me <laughs> Spent a lot of years with Scott Storch, to tell you that much. Oh, well, that, listen, I like to know those secrets. <laughs> we can get into that, yeah, yeah. And then how did you transition from music into unscripted television? Uh, well, I mean, there was a long journey in between there. I mean, music I did from the time I was 15 till the time I was, like, 22 while I was going to USC and studying business. I wound up, um, so I did, I, did a, I, did a, I did four and a half years at Interscope Death Row. And then Aaron Spelling wound up giving his son and I uh, our own label deal through um, through Spelling Entertainment. Okay. So we had an independent record label, uh, and we wound up putting out a couple independent label, a uh, couple independent records. And we were trying to be like, you know, trying to break into the music business. I had worked for these big corporate record companies, so I was like, let's try and do it on our own. Unfortunately, at that age. You know, you can spend a million dollars pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we 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 made some records. We we made a record with uh, with with Raekwon. We did we actually did some stuff very early, early, early on with Kanye West, where um, we had this one producer from Philadelphia and Kanye and him had collaborated on an independent record that we put out. But in that time, I was kind of trying to grow a little bit, and at the same time, Eminem was starting to happen. And one of my mm -hmm. friends discovered Eminem at the Rap Olympics, um, and and like the first week that Eminem was really in LA getting his deal with Interscope, they brought me in to meet with him and I wound up working for Eminem for about a year and a half uh, at the very very you know on the first record which which was I basically watched classic. the, the, the classic, I, yeah. I saw that entire record from start to finish being made I mean it, it and it was so crazy because when I heard the demo and my friend was like you're gonna love this guy like and he had like literally the five song demo this mm -hmm. is before Dr. Dre heard it this is like yeah. right as Jimmy Ivey was getting it about to hand it to Dr. Oh, Dre wow. Wow. this demo would blow your mind and then they're like He's white. You're like, <laughs> no. hold on. I, no I don't way. believe it. <laughs> so we so we knew something crazy was gonna happen there. Um, so I so I got to live through you know the beginning stages of seeing you know that was a, that was the first superstar that I got to work with that I saw being made that I was a part of a project saw it being made from start to finish, mm -hmm. and to watch somebody go from being an unknown to an absolute star. I mean yeah. the, the biggest right. star in the world. You know you learn a lot from that experience. You know, and on a second note, which is odd, uh, odd enough, and this is on a personal level, Adam Levine was my next door neighbor growing up, and oh, one wow. of my one of my best friends, all through you know elementary school and high school, and even and even now. I mean, I don't see him as much right now because he's <laughs> on a, a world, the world worldwide yeah. lifestyle, but yeah. he you know his family, and uh, I and it was weird because I saw him go from being signed at fourteen to where it took him 10 years, and then when he was 25, he sold 10 million records. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting to see people that you know and grow up with, and as we all go on this journey, whether it's me going on a journey into management or them going on a journey as star, you know, it's all, we all are fighting for the same dream in right. a lot of ways. Um, but but to get back to that, so I, I wound up getting out of the um, the record business because I had this, you know, I had this, uh, this business degree. So I'm like, I can go work in corporate. So what's the corporate side of, of the entertainment business? And that's agenting. Yeah. And I, and I, and I do find that anybody that wants to break into the business uh, as a, as a manager or producer, 
that is where you need to start. You need to start in the agency business because that is where you're going to learn the relationships. You're going to learn how actually how do how do you get jobs and broker deals. That's the most important thing. Yeah. So I went to William Morris. Uh, I did a year and a half working for the heads of the music department at William Morris, and then I did uh, and then I did uh, five and a half years at United Talent Agency, wow. UTA. But I I segued into the um, motion picture department. Mm -hmm. So I was a motion picture talent agent. So I represented actors. You know, we worked with Will Ferrell and uh, Owen Wilson and uh, Ben Stiller and uh, Martin Lawrence, Harrison Ford, all these great, Johnny Depp, all these huge, great actors. But wow. the thing was, is like this non-scripted thing was starting to bubble. And I was there because I, you know, I knew the Osbournes growing up. I grew up with Paris and Paris and Nicole Richie. Nicole so, Richie. I, so, so I was kind of seeing that from afar. And I was noticing that the celeb you spawn business was becoming a business. So it yeah. was the sons and daughters of celebrities were starting to become these kind of big deal people that the press was talking about. So what we started to do was we started to broker deals for them. Hmm. And um, being that I was a motion picture talent agent, I wound up signing, you know, we worked with the Osbournes, we worked with Paris and Nicole, we worked with all the kids from Laguna Beach. So all the big first pop culture reality stars were all sort of coming out at that time. Yeah. Now, mind you, I was supposed to be selling, you know, movie ideas, mm -hmm. right? yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't, I was focused on this whole other business. So as I lived through the simple life and lived through the Osbournes, lived through Laguna Beach, and these were big breakout shows of that era, I said, my one best friend is Randy Spelling. My other best friend is Sean Stewart. Both their parents are superstars of this game. Let's do a show about our group in Hollywood. And uh, that's when we created Sons of Hollywood. Yeah. And that was my first mark into non-scripted television. And that was in, I, I created that show in 2006. We shot it in 2007 and aired in 2008. So it was a long journey. Your first show is always going to be your hardest right. to sell. Mm -hmm. you know, but I had been living and watching all of these uh, clients of UTAs at the time creating and producing shows. So I knew how to broker the deal. I knew how to get the meetings. I knew how to come up with the concept. And I knew how to make the show happen. So I put all that together. And uh, I decided to walk out of the uh, the agency world after you know seven years of doing it, and to move into management because technically agents are not supposed to create and create produce. Video. But yo, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, so I, exactly. uh, I took my clients, took my ideas, and set up shop. You're out of there. Well, you mentioned yeah. a lot of the popular reality stars that you've worked with. We find that a lot of times that you know after one season or two seasons they're popular, and then it kind of their careers tend to fade. Yeah. As a manager, how do you keep them in the game and how do you keep them like fresh and, and new and, and keeping them in the know of what's going on Well, look, there? all versions of talent and celebrity have a lifespan. So we have to be conscious of what we do while we're at the height of those of the popularity to make sure that we build businesses and opportunities that we're able going to that we're able to spin off for a number of years to keep them employed and to keep money coming in. Um, it, it really all depends on the level of celebrity and the level of show that you're doing, you know. It, it can all it can go two different ways. I mean, there are people that do one show and they're huge for a year and then you never see them again. Yeah. And then there's people that are kind of mediocre and stay in the middle and continue to work all the time. So it really just depends on how do you stay relevant. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, it's funny. Too short, who I manage, always says something to me, and, <laughs> and I look at and I look at his career. You know, he's he's been in the business for 30 plus years. He's sold millions and millions of records. We're putting out his 25th album this year. And he always says to me, he goes, you know what? You're only as current as your last hit mm -hmm. and there's so much truth to that because you can keep putting out songs keep putting out tv shows keep putting out movies but people do equate like what was the last thing that you did and in the buyer's market the people that managers and agents are selling to that is one of the biggest thing it's like well what did he just do so you always have to make sure you have something current populated visible you know and today with the internet and yeah. all the ways of social media it's very easy to stay current and popular so it's, oh, well, a no. lot of people categorize managers and agents into the same group. Like some people yeah, think they can do different. with one without yeah. the other. Yeah. What are some things that a manager can do that an agent can't do? Well, can I break down what the difference is? Yes, Because yes, a lot of people want to know like, and they don't know the is, difference. Okay, so. okay. An, an, an agent is the guy who's kind of in the trenches of 
the the selling of talent. So their 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 job is to sell to the buyer, sell to casting directors, sell to producers, sell to studios, sell to record companies, sell to concert promoters, sell to advertisers, whatever that may be. The manager is more of the business partner who is who is working on the long term career with the talent. So like my clients were business partners. So let's say that this that my client, the actor, the rapper, the rock star, the celebrity, whoever it may be, whatever they say is what I'm saying. And whatever yeah. I'm saying is what they're saying. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing. So essentially the agents, the publicists, the lawyers, everybody works for the manager and the and the client. Um, it, it, it's just the level of how how deep are you in the relationship with the t with whatever the talent that you're representing are you know agents are great like i would not be where i'm at today had i not spent my years at william morris and uta i would definitely not be sitting here talking to you and hmm. breaking this down right now right. but at the same time the agent you know having been an agent for so long when i meet with agents now that want to represent my company or represent my clients or me or you know whatever it may be it's like don't agent me right like i'll agent <laughs> i'm gonna agent you right because right? because whatever you're trying to sell to me in in your career i've already done it yeah. <laughs> so you know we we, we th i think that there there is a very big line between the two things i think that that an agent is someone who really goes out and and works and hustles the jobs but we have to determine if the deal is right and make the decisions with the talent if the projects that the agents are bringing in are going to help the trajectory of the career we also mentioned briefly you had your reality show, Sons of Hollywood, mm -hmm. and it documented your life with your group of friends and whatnot, and now we're seeing such a boom in reality TV. Huge. You know, you kind of discovered that it was getting big when it was first starting, and yeah. now everyone's kind of hopping on that, and we're seeing Bachelor stars are hosting now, real world stars are acting. Is reality TV the secret to cracking into the business? Well, it definitely gives you, it's an easier way to crack into the business because, you know, they're looking for big, loud, crazy characters that are unfiltered and willing to speak their minds and go crazy on television. And, <laughs> and or, or it's somebody who has a completely bizarre job or some unique area of, uh, you know, work or lifestyle that nobody's seen before. So it does open up the doors in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it necessarily makes it easier. I mean, it's always great to be like, oh my God, he starred in the movie that like won Sundance. And like, <laughs> then you're a big star. It's not like, oh my God, he was on Jersey Shore. What's he going to do? It's two completely different businesses. Now you have to focus the actor who starred in the great Sundance movie and the, and you know, taking the Paul E.D. of the world and turning him into a business. Right. They're completely different avenues that you have to take. Now both work just fine. And you know, at the end of the day, we, we can almost see who's got the bigger bank account and <laughs> who's doing That's well. True. You know, I mean, you know, Paul E.D. makes a hundred grand a day when he Right. DJing, so it's like that's, I, that's a pretty good business. There's you know actors that are in great films that are still doing work for scale plus ten. So mm -hmm. you know, and then you've worked on so many different projects. We've talked about obviously Sons of Hollywood yeah. and just uh, Hollywood Hillbillies, and mm -hmm. you've also collaborated with Dr. Drew with mm -hmm. uh, Celebrity Rehab. Yes. How do you go about? selecting the projects that you are going to really put your hands into well i mean celebrity rehab was a completely unique thing i mean it was a it was a groundbreaking television show unlike anything that had ever been done in the history of television and you know it, it was when we put that show together we never th who would have thought that we would have done nine seasons and three spinoffs i mean it's yeah. it's crazy it, you know um it, it was it was it was of shock value um, but the root of it was to help people. I mean, I, I got to say that before it became such a salacious, crazy show, it was about helping people yeah. and getting people through stuff. And, and we all know that Hollywood is a difficult place to deal with stuff, and there is alcoholism and drug yeah. use and stuff. And, and we wanted to help correct people that had gone down the wrong path. Um, and, I, and I feel blessed to have been a part of that show. I mean, it, it was a very controversial thing to be involved with, um, but I am proud of all the all the deals that I made for that show and my involvement in, in, in turning it into a successful hit. It, it definitely has helped uh, mold my career in a lot of ways. But, you know, it, 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 was a, it was an interesting journey. Very, very different than the journey I'm on right now, obviously, with the Hollywood Hillbillies, yeah. you know, because this is like a completely like, you know, because even in, in Celebrity Rehab, I mean, I had to make a few appearances on that show dealing with the craziness of clients going nuts in that yeah. show and dealing with those problems. So I, I'm glad that it's taken its course and it will always be a part of history. And when do you sleep? 
Uh, I don't know. Never. Can I get an hour? Maybe. <laughs> right. Maybe we can maybe, pull maybe a cot together for you. Right? I, I see the couch we got it here. Sleep We're gonna in your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep in. I sleep in my closet. I'm like. I'm like. I'm hanging. I'm hanging by my suits. No. No. I. I, I get. I get my rest. You. You know. In this business, if you don't take time off for yourself, you're. You're gonna run rampant. You have to you have take to, time. Yeah. You know, I, I unfortunately haven't really had a vacation in about six months, but it's okay because all the hard work that I've been trying to put in is is paying off. And, yeah. you know, you Definitely. want you look, look, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. So and you seem to have the key to success for getting projects developed. How do you go about doing that? I mean, a lot of people think that it's just I write this script or I, or I create this YouTube series and it's someone should naturally pick it up. Yeah. But how do you, you know the secret, how do you get things well, actually developed you, in Hollywood? Well, you, you need to, you know, again with that, it comes down to the package. I mean, there are materials that need to be done to sell television shows, to sell movies. If the writing is not there, if the twist is not there, if the casting is not there, it's not going to get bought. You also have to have a very good standing with the buyers. And that's only something that in years you learn through relationships that you build. Like I said, look, I, I, I'm 35 years old. I started when I was 15. This is 20 years wow. I've been doing this. Like I, that's, I feel like I'm really young to say 20 years I've yeah. been doing this. But it's taken a lot of times, and it's taken the ups and downs and the good, the bad, the small deals, the big deals, the deals that went amazing, the deals that went south, all of, all of the craziness of what this is to learn how to actually execute the deals. And that's what, uh, you know, that's my expertise. What were some of those, tra what were some of the biggest difficulties of that transition? Um, you know, building, building your first few hits, building your first major clients, building, building people that are, that are, you know, noteworthy that you represent that then they know you're the guy that you, oh, well, Weintraub did his career. So, you know, he's going to do it right. Or Weintraub created that show. You know, it, it's, yeah. it comes down to like those moments and, but it's getting there. And that's just that, look, if you put in your 22,000 hours, you're going to get it. 22,000 hours of anything, you're going to get it. You're going to get your degree. You're going to sell your show. You're going to write your script. You're going to get your movie sure. made. That's what you have to do. And if you're not willing to put in that time and hustle it, it's not going to happen. So don't just come to LA and be like, yo, I'm gonna walk down Sunset Boulevard and discovered. I'm gonna get discovered by Harvey <laughs> Levin. I mean, who knows? You you may, but Yeah, it's like a one percent chance, right? Exactly. But you also wanna make sure that like what you're doing you're, you're is gonna have an end game, yeah. you know? So that, that those are things to consider as you decide to embark into uh, any any area of the of the of the entertainment business. And well, how important oh, go ahead. A lot of this industry is about, you know, the respect of your peers. Mm -hmm. Is there a constant need to, at least in the beginning, to prove yourself? Or is of it kind of just you're doing your own thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I paid my dues. I, I was an assistant. I was a trainee. Mm -hmm. um, I got coffee. <laughs> you know, I, I answered the phone. I did it all. But at the same time, I was making deals while I was yeah, doing that. Right. So it's like you got to, you have to... Um, you know, the, the breaking point for me, which actually got me like promoted to full agent, was that I was I was kind of hip pocketing Paris Hilton. Yeah. So, and this was at like the beginning as she was really pop, and we yeah. were like signing her, and like the execution of her first deals is what got me promoted as an agent. Oh wow! So they saw that okay, well if he's messing around with her in that world, he definitely is going to have more people that he right. can bring to the table. So you have to even hustle it even as a junior while you're coming up. You know, act as if if you're an assistant working at an agency. You're the agent. <laughs> right? Take that client that's on that list that you see that never gets work and go find that client some work. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be that guy's agent. That's you know, I, I mean, I mean I, that's I, good I, advice. It, it happens all the time. I remember I had, I had good name actors that were sitting on the UTA client list that that weren't getting work. And I would hustle them for little independent movies and call them and be like, I got you this job. And it would make their real agent look like they're the man because they're like, oh, I'm getting this out of work actor jobs. Right. But it meant something to me because I was selling this person and helping them out and then actually delivering a job. So it's wow. like, you gotta act as if. It's fake it till you make it, right? Fake it till you make fake it. Fake it till you make yeah, it. Take course. it in your own hands. <laughs> and then social media is so much involved with people's careers. Now, we kind of touched about it at the beginning of the, the uh, interview. 
but people now are YouTube sensations. You mm -hmm. can literally go and have a million hits off of doing something silly. How important do you think that it is to build a career off of social media as you are going to find representation from a manager or a talent agent? Well, I mean, look, you know, the big thing right now is like, you know, the everybody with the Vine, Vine this, Vine that. Like, I get it. Vine is cool. Like, I respect the technology. I respect it. But you have an overabundance of people out there that are like, I'm a Vine star. Like, what, what does that mean? Does mean yeah. Are you really utilizing that and turning that into something? Um, you know, you have to be careful of like what you glom onto and what you think is going to be your path because at the end of the day, some of this stuff is very short lived. Yeah. So uh, be conscious of what you determine is your talent and how you're putting that out there. But all social media, I think, is only going to benefit you. Just don't be like I don't like to see the people who are <laughs> not to be <laughs> not to be a, not to be a dick, but like <laughs> like I'll see people that are like extras, like posting pictures of them like in a movie behind an actor as an extra. Like don't post those. Yeah. Come yeah. on, like that's bad, that's, bad that's social media that's etiquette. Em, that's embarrassing for you. You know, if you don't know that that's embarrassing, yeah, somebody should tell you because <laughs> there's something kind of crazy about that. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know. Well, you've talked a little bit about what you look for in your potential clients. What mm -hmm. are some of the biggest deal breakers that when you're looking to represent someone you just will not tolerate um bad attitude um you know somebody that's not willing to go to meetings somebody that's going to show up late to meetings mm -hmm. somebody that's not going to respect my time or respect my opinion um if you've hired me or i've hired you like we have to have a working relationship we're all normal people yeah. we all put on our pants the same way we all do the same stuff like I cannot stand arrogance. I cannot stand you know people that think that they're better than other people. Like mm -hmm. we're all working for the same goal. It's a team, you know. There's no I in team. Yeah. And then back in the day, it seemed like when you had a talent that, say it was a record label, say it was a studio, they would take time to really develop that person. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, with, as we were mentioning with social media, you know, you have you kind of come in and have to come in as a package. Yeah. How important is that for you also to have someone? completely together when they come in to have representation from you well they, they they need to have they need to have their stuff together because if they don't it's like how can I really evaluate what we're gonna do with you you know there isn't there isn't the years of development that you can really put into people now like mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't take a complete unknown and develop them from soup to nuts like I I, I just don't have time to do that yeah. Um, so I think that you already kind of have to have that, but that, that more comes from like life experience yeah. mm -hmm. and you know, like, you know, you take somebody, I'm going to give you a weird example, but even somebody like Rod Stewart, when Rod Stewart made it, I mean, he was playing his guitar on the street, yeah. right. you know, and that was his way of then ultimately getting in great bands and then making it to the next, the next level and then becoming, you know, bigger than Elvis Rod or Stewart. whatever. Rod yeah. Stewart, right. So it's like you have to start somewhere. But today, you have this great visual that you can do. So it's like, oh my god, we can blast this video out there. And this video is going to be my representation to the world of what I can do. Awesome. We are also the Vice President of Development for Stone & Company Entertainment. Uh, I, I, I used to run that company. I, I, I don't work with them anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I ran that company for about three years. That was my, okay. my former production company. But now all productions are done in through my DWE brand. Great. So yeah. you're constantly juggling multiple things at once. You have, we've talked about all the projects that you're working mm -hmm. on. You're running your company. Mm -hmm. How, like, what is the secret to being able to multitask efficiently? <laughs> um, a lot of staff and great assistants and great people and great family. Um, you know, for me, my, my company does a few things. I mean, we do we do brand endorsement deals, we do appearance deals, we do management, we do publicity, we produce shows, we create shows, and then I star in some shows. So mm -hmm. it's like it's a lot of different things that we do. So you know, one day I have to wear one hat. Another day I have to wear another hat. You know, yesterday I was producing a show all day, and then I was taking clients to do concerts last night and appearances. Wow. And then today all day I was shooting my show. So it's like you gotta wear your hat a little bit differently depending on what you're doing. Um, but I I do think that that's why the management business allows you the freedoms to do that. But you have to pay your dues on the other side of the table before you can get there. I d I paid my dues. I have blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. to get to get here, and even yeah. to get here to be able to speak to you guys about w what it what is, is that we do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm appreciative of that. Like this is this is I want to get my message out there of, of how it, what it takes to get to those places. And with juggling so many different things, where can people who are enjoying what you're doing? see you next 
Well, uh, you know, I have, I have, <laughs> I, we have the Hollywood Hillbilly Show, which you can see us on uh, on Reels every week, Tuesday at nine o'clock. Um, and then I have my uh, All Star Battle Show that we produce for Oxygen with Ray J. Uh, I have a couple other new TV shows that I'm not going to announce here that are coming out that are no from the sneak peeks yeah. from the brand. I, I can't. I gotta let the, you gotta let that you can't. You'll piss off the networks. You gotta let the networks do that. Um, and then you know you can you know we uh, you can check out the website. It's dwetalent.com, and on Twitter it's at dwe talent on instagram it's dz gram d-e-z-y g-r-a-m 007 <laughs> I, like yeah. I think you need to make those t-shirts too with the uh, rap name they gave Super you right? i know super, super dave. dave i got super the dave. jacket got i got handle. them on ebay <laughs> listen i got the death row jacket i got the chain i got i got <laughs> i i had the chain i had the real i still have it it's in you a got... safe somewhere no one's gonna find that one <laughs> but i have it <laughs> so we can your fans can find you in all those outlets yes and sure. uh where can we find you, Jessica? Find me on Twitter at I am Jessica King. You can find me at Daryl Kristen on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, David, for joining us today. Sure. We are Thank very you. excited Thank about you. all of your projects. Yes. That Thank you're you doing. so much. Thank you for and having we me. We look Thank forward you. to continuing to tune in to what you're doing next. And uh, thank you for tuning in and breaking in. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood, Hollywood redefined. redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.